Eric Ten Hag is set to be sacked this Sunday after Manchester United play Liverpool, according to reports from the mainstream media this morning. The only way of saving his job is to win or avoid a heavy defeat. And that, according to the mainstream media, is where Manchester United are at with Eric Ten Hag, hanging on by an absolute thread. Now, to a lot of Manchester United fans, this will be music to their ears. Many Manchester United fans, including me, do not believe in Ten Hag for one reason or another. I don't believe we're a monolith. I don't believe that we all think and feel the exact same, uh, the exact same about this situation. It is highly complex. It should not be twisted into some to sort some s- simplistic resolution. But we know the manager is in and around, nearing the end of his tenure at Manchester United. As far as I am concerned, when you look at these results. You appear and you look at the injury list going into this game with no Rashford, no Martial, no Lindelof, Maguire, Shaw, Casemiro, of course, no Sancho, no Malassia, no Lissandro Martinez, Eriksen out, Mount out, Ahmad out, Bruno suspended for this game. You look at the injury list, you look at our recent record at Anfield, the pressure we're under and how poorly we are playing. And I think you could put two and two together and say, well, they lose five or six nil. You could definitely see the manager of Man United, Eric Ten Hag, be sacked. But how accurate are these reports? For some people, they want them to be inaccurate because they want to see the manager stay. Others will want the, the, the reports to be accurate because they want him out of the football club. But your want and desire shouldn't be what you use as a barometer to whether a story is true or not. And we have to delve into this in more detail because the same outlets, The Sun, as an example, are reporting that not only are Man United considering sacking Eric Ten Hag if there is a bad defeat of the weekend, which would suggest to you that he's hanging on by the skin of his teeth. If you're ever at a point as a manager where one bad defeat makes you lose your job, it means you're almost at the end of your time. At the, at the same time, these media outlets are claiming that Manchester United um, are considering Graham Potter as a replacement. Graham Potter, the manager that changed his, his, his physical style, his dress sense, his haircut, lost his way completely at Chelsea and absolutely drowned, is now according to the same outlet saying we're going to sack Ten Hag to be a front runner with Ineos imminently arriving, Sir Jim coming in. That is what they are telling us. They also suggest here that Sir Jim Ratcliffe has reportedly held a meeting with Graham Potter and the ex-Chelsea boss would be his first choice to replace Eric Ten Hag as the Manchester United manager. This was all, by the way, started by Neil Custis, who says a heavy loss on Sunday um, against Liverpool could be the final straw um, for the under-fire Eric Ten Hag. He, of course, was also the journalist who started the rumour that Graham Potter is the favourite to replace him. And this is multifaceted again, and Man United fans look at this in different ways. Some believe this is a PR stunt to make Man United fans say, Actually, this stick with Ten Hag because Graham Potter would be worse. And if that's true, whether it's that, whether whether both elements of that are true, or just Man United fans saying actually this stick with Ten Hag because Graham Potter is worse, that is not a ringing endorsement that you would want to have around your neck. I'm only staying because there's nobody better. I'm only keeping my job because there's nobody better. It's not really uh, what you want to hear at your end of year appraisal. It's not what you want to hear from your girlfriend. Why are we still together, darling? Well, because I can't find anybody better. But as soon as I do, I'm off. It's not really what you want to be hearing. If it is PR by Manchester United, would you be surprised? I would not. At the same time, I'm seeing Man United fans try to make an argument for Graham Potter, which I think at this point is absolutely ridiculous. In my personal opinion, I think Zippy, George, and Bungle would have a better chance of controlling this dressing room and helping to fix the cultural problems at this club, as well as implementing a better style of football than Graham Potter. He is drowned at Chelsea. Manchester United is a deeper ocean by 
20,000 leagues, and it's 20,000 leagues under the sea, I don't mean league tables, then Chelsea, and I mean that of all due respect to Chelsea, Man United is a bigger juggernaut. And if you drown at Chelsea, you are absolutely drowning at Manchester United. So this idea from Man United fans that, oh, we could do a good job here. It might be different. Oh, it's the gym and better run. With Ineos coming in being better run, it might improve. For me, if we are going to remove Ten Hag, if we are looking to rebuild this culture, we need to pick a manager that at the very least right now has some real credibility in the game, has an excellent playing style that fits in with 2023's football, that is contemporary, who can handle big personalities. That is what we need to try and break the bank to do. Going from Ten Hag to Graham Potter, in my opinion, is going from a rock to a hard place, the frying pan into the fire. It's no improvement whatsoever. So as much as I do believe Ten Hag is coming to the end of his time, and as much as I believe he should be dismissed, that is also coupled with the layered thinking that the club has to go and find an adequate replacement as well. It isn't just sack the manager and then we, we, we you know, we, we, we piss in the wind and hope we hope it doesn't hit us on the legs. You, know, you have to plan. And I always think of these things as being a uh, prerequisite of, I think the manager's got to go, that you also believe that I think we have to get a, re a good quality replacement lined up, not we sack him and then work out what to do. Now, I would never dismiss a member of staff without having a plan of action of how to resolve things unless they committed an absolute heinous piece of gross misconduct. They struck another member of staff or stole something. They'd have to go instantly. But we're not in that scenario. So therefore, logic should apply. That Of course, I mean, find somebody better, more adequate for this job. And I don't believe that is Graham Potter. Then you get down to the realms of, is this story even true? Now, Sam here from the United Stand, who is very credible. There's a lot of people very well connected. It says, why do the Sun continue to let Neil Custis write absolute made-up rubbish in the papers? He spoke about the hair coming back, which was false. He said a week or so ago that Qatar were going to come back in to buy the club. That was false. Now he's saying that Sir Jim wants Potter. And I wanted to call this out and highlight it as well, because there could be multiple elements of this story which are true. There could be multiple elements to this story that could be true. However, I don't even believe he's on the shortlist. I, I genuinely do not believe he's on the shortlist. I believe that... I don't believe this is the club's PR either. I've given you all the options and scenarios of what I'm reading and seeing. Now I'm going to give you my opinion. That's called balance. For me, I just believe this is made up. To a certain degree, there may have been some whisperings and murmurs. So there's probably a source that has stated that Sir Jim knows Graham Potter or likes Graham Potter. And when you look at how it's been worded in the article by Custis, it's very much this could happen. This may happen. It's almost an opinion piece based on a story he's heard about a connection between the two. So I believe it is a highly fabricated, so not made up as such, but highly fabricated story set to trigger Manchester United fans, set to make them fight and argue amongst themselves to generate attention. That is what I believe it to be personally. Now, if we end up with Graham Potter, I'll he eat my hat. I absolutely will. But don't let the Graham Potter news, if you don't want him, go, oh, we might as well keep Ten Hag. No, we must keep our standards high. And don't start making excuses and, and generating reasons as to why you think suddenly Graham Potter is going to become that man. Because I'm telling you this now, as sure as eggs are eggs, he is not. That's a madness, people. Ten Hag may be a dead man walking. Ten Hag may already be sacked in the eyes of most of this board. Maybe Ineos want him out already. But that doesn't mean you make excuses for someone at the level of Graham Potter. Yes. Man United, Sir Jim Radcliffe are already spoken to Potter, wants him to replace Ten Hag. If Liverpool result is bad, Ten Hag could be sacked. Ineos will be in by next week. I mean, I don't believe any of that, but it's a news sto new story. And, you know, it's quite a big news story. So if I, I, I don't think it's inconceivable that if we lost heavy to Liverpool this weekend, that the manager could lose his job. I don't believe that element is inconceivable. Of course, we're going to react to it. But one of the big things I wanted to pull out from that, and somebody's just said it there with a the super chat, is that this does feel like sacking by media. This feels like certain journalists and certain outlets are deciding, let's sack Eric Ten Hag. 
I, I, I saw somebody say last night, and they were absolutely spot on. Newcastle are out of Europe, bottom of their group, with five points. And they are below Manchester United in the league. And Eddie Howe has been at Newcastle longer than Eric Ten Hag has been at Manchester United. There are no calls for Eddie Howe to get sacked. In fact, Eddie Howe is a genius. But Eric Ten Hag needs to go. He's so... Uh, look, I, people, some people will exaggerate. I wouldn't call Eddie Howe a genius. I agree with that element completely. For me, the scenarios at the clubs are different. Eddie Howe isn't falling out with these players. There is continued... They continue to galvanise further. There is a, a clear, unadulterated, undeniable connection between him and his fans. The intersections with his players. The style of football is very good. Now, both clubs have injuries, there's no doubt, and that will impact both clubs. But I think there is a fervent belief from most football fans that when Newcastle's first-team players start to return, the level of football is going to get better and increase. But for Man United, who truly believes that Casemiro and Lissandro Martinez returning will, is genuinely going to make us not just get back to the levels of last season, but look to surpass that and go to another level. You also look at how we've been run, how things have operated, the fallings out with players, etc. You add all this together, and although if you were to list all the elements that could get a manager sacked, there are definitely some boxes ticked for Eddie Howe. The scenario at Newcastle and the scenario at Manchester United, in my personal opinion, is different. Therefore, the call to action, the response from fans of that club, the media, et cetera, are always going to be different. This, you know, I, I do get the challenge, but I don't believe the scenarios are the same at all. And I know Mark's a big advocate of Ten Hag, and I get where he's coming from. And there is a big part of me that agrees with it, that we need to stick with the manager to help rebuild a process. The problem we have here is through his own words, through the style of play we're trying to, we're trying to implement, the signings that have happened and the way we've regressed against 18 months in, which, which seems to be the path of the course, there is no process being built. There is no process to follow. Nothing has changed. It's just a new coach getting his signings that he wants, trying to play this weird style of football that the Glazers are kind of pushing and advocating. And it is horrendous. We need to start a new, we need to have a rebuild. We need a, 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 a seismic one. But I believe we need to start removing the majority of these players. We need to remove the entire board, the whole recruitment team, and the manager and coaching staff and start from an absolute fresh slate when Ineos comes in. For me, that is going to be the quickest and the fastest way. It may be slightly more expensive that way around, but there are some cases in life, and I love this saying my dad taught me as a kid. He was actually talking about when I was putting new tires on my car, but I think the sentiment uh, and, and, and the rationale rings true here cheap is expensive and that's the problem with man united we always look for the cheap alternative the cheap option in these types of scenarios oh let's keep some of the players and let's keep the manager and reinvest that money elsewhere the problem is the rot is still there and if you've got a a, a rotting roof and you're told your roof needs to be replaced because that's too expensive i'm like i'm not going to spend my money on that and all you do is buy some new timber and you kind of hammer it in and you kind of force it in and go, right, that's going to keep the structure secure. It will for a period of time. But that rot will eventually seep into the new wood and the new wood will crumble and fall apart and it'll be back in the same position again. And that is where Man United are. We need to cut out every single problem at the club, big and small, and start again. That is the only way, in my personal and humble opinion, we will be fixed. I want your thoughts and I want your feelings on this. You may see this very differently from me. And if you do, leave your comments below. This is no echo chamber. You won't be banned for different comments. You won't be, you know, put in the gulag for it. Do you see Ten Hag being sacked this week? Can you imagine Graham Potter coming in? What do you think Ineos should do to help fix this football club? I want your comments below. Take care. Goodbye. God bless. And I'll see you all again soon.